Here we have in front of us the Prima Materia for today's experiment, which will be looking at the beginning of a series on chromate-based pigments. Um, so today's first task is to produce chrome yellow. So the basic components of chrome yellow, or to get to what is called lead chromate, is to take lead nitrate, right, which is a nitrated salt of lead, or in alchemical terms we've taken the metal of satin and we've added aquafortis to it and through that process we've created a crystalline salt called lead nitrate which this jar is actually quite heavy um, despite its size anyway so we'll be taking our lead source which ultimately just has to be a soluble lead source so you could also use lead acetate or sugar of lead um, which I shall make some in and amongst this series to see if there's any difference between the two. And we'll be taking that and we'll be combining it with a chromium source. So here we have a, the large jar. This is potassium dichromate. Here we have a little small sample of crystals of ammonium dichromate. And here in the jars we have our samples of chromium, elemental chromium and lead. Up the back here we have some potassium hydroxide which is an alkaline which we'll be using at a later stage for making some of the orange and red variants of the chromate pigments and we also have some sulfuric acid here too which will aid us in making some of the lighter lemon yellow variants of the chrome pigment so we should be able to through these materials um, get a fairly big spectrum from very pale yellows through like the whole gradation sun yellows and deep yellows and really warm yellows right down to like vibrant oranges and potentially if we're lucky even some really deep red colors or even uh, like a chromate vermilion would be a nice outcome from this. So let's just start by getting a very simple neutral lead chromate produced and then we'll work from there. So now I'm going to mix up my lead nitrate solution and my potassium dichromate solution so I can make the first precipitate of lead chromate which will just be my neutral lead chromate yellow. We're going to take, so we just have on the scales here. we'll be putting five grams of lead nitrate crystals. Lead being very heavy, it doesn't take much to get to five grams. That already, as you can see there, that very small amount is five grams. To that I will be adding approximately 100 mils of water in order to dilute the solution like so. Place that to the side and into here we will be putting 2.25 grams of potassium dichromate I'll also be diluting this down a fair bit to about 100 mils as well the reason we want dilute solutions of our chemicals is so that we can get small precipitate particles to form. So this will be our apparatus again. We're using small funnel, separatory style funnel that I can slowly drip the potassium chromate, which I will just add to now. You can 
stay here and we will be dripping that into our lead nitrate solution. So we can see here the constant rate of dripping from our potassium dichromate down into the lead nitrate solution which we have a very nice precipitate forming which if I shine a light you can see there it's incredible yellow it's good. I'll need to just Top up. I'm just going to top up my dichromate up the top here so that we can keep the dripping process going. So now all of the chromate solution has gone in and as we stop the stirring you can see all of the precipitate of the lead being lead is heavy and wants to settle out very quickly. Sort of you can see it there. Settling down at the bottom. Beautiful. So here I have vacuum filter, which we will be then hopefully able to filter everything through. So we'll flick on the vacuum filter and we'll see how that goes. the precipitate is coming through but that's okay because most of it should get caught in the filter you can see there the stir bar got stuck in there as well but it's doing a pretty good job of cleaning it up um, I have to rinse this out with a bit of water and I'll keep filtering. So here we can see after running it through the vacuum filter we have it seems to have dried up a fair bit it's kind of hard to see but you can see that the pigment is far from dry but it's definitely dried out a lot. So that's the little cake of pigment after it's come out which I'm just going to leave here on this piece of filter paper until it's dry and then process it up from there. <laughs> 